Hello, what are we working on today? Write each equation in slope intercept form. I know you are stoked. You've always wanted to know how to do this and I'm going to show you how. You're welcome. All right, two quick side notes. Number one, I'm going to go um, explain pretty well what I'm doing in this video um, in depth, the steps that I'm taking. If you just need a really quick, um, I knew how to do this, I don't remember anymore. Um, click on this video here, um, which is a quicker one. If you need the extra, extra explanation, I'm so glad you're here and I'm so excited to teach you how to do it. So please stay. Um, all right. Writing an equation in slope intercept form. And you may also be asked to identify the slope and y intercept. Can I also just say, I'm glad you're here. You know, whether you're here for yourself or you're working with one of your cute kids who brought this to you at like 1130 at night and it's due tomorrow and you're really happy looking up YouTube videos on your iPhone. I'm just glad you're here. Okay, so let's get through this together. You can do it. First of all, what the crap is slope intercept form? Super quick review. Don't worry, it won't take long. We are working with linear functions right now. Um, we have an X, we have a Y, there's no exponents. These will make a line when you graph them. There's three ways you'll typically see these written. Um, first is slope intercept form, my personal favorite. I hope it will become your favorite as well. Point slope form, don't need to worry about that one right now, you will later. And standard form, these are all currently in standard form and we're going to convert them to slope intercept form. Slope intercept form, my favorite y equals mx plus b. Okay, we just need to get y by itself and we're good, okay? Um, m is my slope, b is my y-intercept. If you're feeling scared, don't, don't worry, we're gonna take it slow. When I get my answer, m will be a number, b will be a number, y and x will stay y and x. Okay, let me show you. So number one, we've got negative 6x plus y equals 8. Okay, we want to get y all by itself. So I need to get rid of this negative 6x. To get rid of that, I'm going to do the opposite of subtracting 6x, which is adding 6x. Now, if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So I'm also going to add 6x right here. Now, if you're going, uh, what? Why can I just go adding stuff that I just pulled out of the air? Okay, good question. So pretty simple thing here. Five equals five, right? I think we can all agree on that five equals five. If I add one to both sides of that equal sign, I get six equals six, which I think we can all agree is still true. If I add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever, the same thing on both sides, my equation is still true. So the trick is to pick things to add, subtract, whatever, that uh, make my equation do what I want it to. So by adding 6x to both sides here, guess what? This goes away. That makes a zero. So on this side, I'm just left with y equals, and then over here, I've got an 8 and a 6x. Now, if you look at the equation I'm trying to get to here, the x is written first. So I'm going to go ahead and write the x first. So I'm going to write 6x plus 8. And guess what? That's my answer. Now, I know you might be thinking, um, why isn't it y equals 14x? Good question. I was hoping you would ask, so I made this little card. Okay, so we have 6x plus 8, and I am telling you it does not equal 14x. Why? Okay, 6x is really just 6x's being added together. 8 is 8. You're familiar with it, or I wrote it out here as eight ones. So as you can see, when we write it out that way, that is not 14 X's. 
They are not like terms is what we call that in math language. And so I can't add those. So I just leave them separate, which is why this is my answer. Now, if you are being asked on your lovely worksheet that you love what the slope and y-intercept are. Okay, slope is m. In this case, it's the number right in front of my x. It's a 6. So m equals 6. That's my slope. If you don't know what that means yet, that's okay. We will get there. Um, we are adding 8. Whatever's being added on the back is b, which is my y-intercept. Now, right now you might be going like, okay, why does this even matter? You will love this equation. You're going to understand why this is my favorite soon when you start graphing eventually. We're not going to do that on this video, but you will love it. It will be your favorite. Okay, number two, we're going to use green. I know what you're thinking. Math lady, number one was way too easy. If they were all like that, we could be done and I could be in bed. Some of them aren't that easy, so they're not all that easy, but you can do it. These ones aren't terrible. You can do it. So again, my goal is to get y by itself. I've got this negative 12x, so I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to add 12x because that'll get rid of it. I did it to this side, so I must do it to this side. Guess what? Those become a zero. They're gone. So I'm left with 3y equals. I'm going to write the x first because that's how my slope intercept form likes to be placed. So I've got 12x minus 15. All right. This is where you might go. Uh, what's that three doing there? We can get rid of it. Okay. So these are being multiplied. It's three times y to get rid of multiplication, I do the opposite, which is divide. So watch what happens if I divide this by three. Guess what? Three divided by three is one. So I'm left with just one y, or we just write it as y. But if I divide this side, I must divide this side. Now there's two ways you might kind of visually see this. Um, we have 12x minus 15. Some people will just divide that whole thing by three, which is great. Just what you have to remember is that both of these numbers are being divided by three. That gets distributed to both of them. Personally, I just like to write it under each one. I don't know. My brain just likes to see it that way. So now we've got 12x divided by three. You might be thinking, oh, those aren't like terms. You are correct. We can multiply and divide terms that are not alike. Uh, that's an explanation for a different video. Um, but just for now, <clears throat> excuse me, know that we can multiply and divide terms that aren't alike. Now, 12 divided by three gives me four. I'm left with that X. And then we've got a negative divided by a positive, which is gonna be a negative. 15 divided by three is five. Oh my goodness, there's my answer. All right. My M is four. That's my slope. B is negative five. That's my Y intercept. All right, feeling good? Number two, check, check. All right, number three. We're gonna use the blue. Okay, same thing, I want y by itself. I need to get rid of this three x, so I subtract. All right, these go away. I'm left on this side with four y equals. I've said it twice before. <clears throat> We're gonna write the x first. So I've got negative three x plus eight. All right, we're almost done, but this y has this four here that we don't want. It's being multiplied, so I'm gonna divide by four. If I do it over here, I gotta do it over here. All right, four divided by four is one, so I'm left with one y, or just y, equals, oh crap. What the heck am I supposed to do with that? Okay, it's not that bad. It's a fraction. Fractions get a bad rap. They're not that bad. They help us in our daily lives. 
So here's a quick side note. We've got negative 3x divided by 4, right? That looks a little scary. But the cool thing is I can just pull this x off to the side. So then it's negative 3 fourths x. It's a little less scary that way. Also, that's the way we want it for our slope-intercept form. We want them written separate like that. So I'm just going to write this as negative 3 fourths x. One other cool quick side note, this negative can be on top, bottom, out front. It doesn't matter. I typically just stick it right out front. Now we've got plus 8 over 4, which is 2. Oh my goodness. We did another one. You did it. All right. M is negative 3 fourths. That's my slope. B is 2. That is my y-intercept. Okay? You feeling okay? You'll understand what those are soon if you don't already. Um, I just want to give you two quick um, bonus ones that those people who make math worksheets might throw at you because they just like to give you random weird things that are fun. So here's just a quick bonus. If you are solving and you end up with something like this, y equals negative x over 5 plus 1 half, it might be like, oh, that looks kind of funny. I don't know if that's right. Um, it is, but we just want to move it, uh, just change the way it looks a little bit so it fits this a little bit better. Whenever you don't have a number in front of that variable, there's really a one there. Just like over here, how I said we have one y left, but we just write it as y. There's really a one here, um, a negative one for this x. So then similar to this principle here, I can just pull that X off to the side. So this fits this much better. Then this is my M slope. This is my B Y intercept. Okay. One more. What if you're solving, you're doing so good. And then you're like, crap. What do I do with a negative Y? Is, am I done? No, but you're so freaking close. So you've got negative y equals 2x minus 4. We don't want that y to be negative because this one's not negative. Now, the way to switch it is you're either multiplying by negative 1 on both sides or dividing by negative 1. It gives you the same thing. The outcome is the same. All that does is it switches the signs. We go from a negative to a positive, a positive to a negative, a negative to a positive. So then my correct answer is y equals negative 2x plus 4. Okay, hopefully that's any weird things you'll run into. Um, I tried to think of any, everything, but hopefully that was enough to help you do this worksheet. Hopefully it's only like 11.45 now and you can get it all done and go to bed. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you'll dream of math tonight and it won't be a nightmare. Thanks for working with me.